Hello, this is Pick, and welcome back to another guide for FTP Neotech. This one is about nuclear power and the ways you can use it, and of course, as usual, this is going to be applicable to what modern industrialization has normally, as with all the other guides I have made. So, what are we looking at? Well, there's a lot of complication to the nuclear physics in this mod. It's not the most complicated nuclear mod out there, but it does have a lot of mechanics and a lot of things you need to get used to and learn in order to properly build your own reactors. I will have timestamps for the example reactors that I will be showing off later, so if you just want to be lazy and copy me, I'm not going to be giving perfect designs, but I will be giving designs that are functional. Of course, you don't need to be optimal. You can always overcompensate by overproducing on a given component if you so desire. So each of these things I have laid out here are different components that go into the reactor. They come in five main categories. We have the fuel rods, the coolants, the heat exchangers, this cadmium control rod that goes in its own category, and we have these platings. So going through each of them one at a time, we have the fuel rods, of course, these are made of some type of fissile material, such as uranium, but can also contain plutonium, or uranium-235, an isotope of uranium. To make the basic fuel rods, as we can see, well, if you look, you have uh, duals and quads as well as the regular, but you can make this directly from pure uranium. What this means is that, unlike, say, Industrial Craft 2, you don't need any 235 to get started. You can make all of your fuel rods out of pure uranium, and while it will be less efficient in various ways, you can get away with using it for simplicity if you'd like. There's also the different types of fuels. We have the low and high energy MOX fuel rods. MOX is the type that contains plutonium in it. And then we also have the high energy uranium and low energy uranium, which use that uranium-235. You'll be able to see all the traits of these various components in JEI, both their heat and neutron related pages. Keep these in mind when creating your reactor. Next, we have our different coolants. We have water, high pressure water, heavy water, and high pressure heavy water. Each of these is going to produce their respective type of steam when processed through the nuclear reactor. However, it's worth noting that you'll get higher conversion rates if you use the high pressure waters. So if you want to do that, you're going to need a pressurizer. I'm not going to fully build one here, but um, if I were to place one down, you will uh, see the structure. It's a small multi-block here. And... Uh, yeah, so these are our coolants, and they're going to produce different things when sent through the nuclear reactor. Then we have heat exchangers. We have the small and the hot big one, and they have different heat capacities. They are used to send heat from c touching components to other components, of course, like real life, heat moves from hot to cold. And then we have cadmium control rods. These are special in that they act as a type of sink for your neutrons. It has a high chance of absorbing them and stopping them from leaving the reactor, and is also somewhat of a temperature modulator. They're, they're basically there to have some balance. And then we have large plates. They have a special property of changing the type of neutron that an incoming neutron is going to turn into. So to go over what a neutron is, the neutron, starting at this arrow on the left, goes in towards the carbon large plate. This uh, pie chart on the right determines the probability of what will happen if a neutron deflects off of this plate. This number, 93%, is the chance that this fast neutron that's incoming, fast is red, thermal is blue, I would have switched them around, but I didn't make the mod, and this is the chance at that neutron is going to turn into either of these types. It doesn't matter which uh, or if a fast neutron goes in, it has a 50% chance of turning into a thermal neutron, and it has a 0.2% chance of being absorbed. Absorption changes depending on the component. If water absorbs a fast neutron, it turns into deuterium. If water absorbs a thermal neutron, its temperature increases. If the plate 
absorbs a fast neutron, it takes durability damage. And if it scatters, it will spread the neutron from uh, what the plate to a, a random adjacent uh, object inside the reactor. I apologize for the stuttering. This is a little complex, and I can only figure out so much of it in the give and take. But what I'm trying to say here is that a neutron comes in, it hits the target, and a different thing will happen depending on what it is. Now, if we were to look at the page for the fuel rods, you'll see that if something hits it, it has a chance of being absorbed, of course. And what happens is if it gets hit, it will send, it will emit more neutrons. And you can see this, uh, if it captures a neutron, it's going to turn that into more neutrons that make the reaction go faster inside the nuclear reactor. And of course, this eventually caps out. So if a neutron touches the edge of a reactor, it's going to just disappear. But it will travel in a straight line if it is not absorbed or scattered by a given component. Note that if the temperature maximum for a component is exceeded, it's going to end up breaking the particular component. This is most notable with heat exchangers, as if you go over the required temperature threshold, it's going to break that component. Alright, now to show you some examples. So, if we look at the top of this reactor, this is a very simple one. I have a very big turbine here, and it's going to take steam from this reactor that's having water being pumped in, and it's going to send it inside the reactor, and I've already pre-filtered everything to uh, work with the pipes. I don't have any deuterium extraction here, but that's because this is just a basic reactor to show you what's going to happen. So, in this setup, when you are building a nuclear reactor, you want to have all of the spaces in the reactor somehow being touched or interacted with. Here, we can see that each of these fuel rods in this design, it's going to spread neutrons. Some of it will go into the water, and some of that will get absorbed and make deuterium, or absorbed and make steam, depending on which type of neutron it is. And because they are adjacently, uh, if they have these ones across from each other, it's going to have these neutrons travel into this fuel rod, and it has that chance to absorb it and send more neutrons out. Or if it just deflect if it doesn't absorb it it will just go out of the reactor like anything else so i have a redstone control module in here and if i turn it on you're going to see it's going to stutter for a bit but what will happen is steam well first we're going to see that uh it takes a bit to heat up the reactor and i can change the view to see what's happening with each of the components and you'll see the temperature increase over time and now that all of it is above boiling point, we can start seeing that steam is entering the turbine. It's only happening at a somewhat slow rate, but it's enough to power the entire turbine, so you can see how strong these things are, as long as you're able to keep up. Now, I have um, a trash can here, but if I were to get rid of the trash can, it will start, uh, or well, maybe I need a uh, cable, actually, here as well. Yes, and then I were to uh, stick that there. We are now making power, and uh, once again, I will just hook up this trash can. And now we can see the rate of the power actually being produced on the top there. And, uh, you know, this is already making almost 10,000 EU per tick, which is pretty good This uh, for such a simple design. And because we're overproducing on steam, you can, of course, make more turbines. The multi-blocks in this mod can share walls. So if you want, you can just make more steam turbines touching it to save materials. And given that it can be a little expensive, that's probably something you want to do. So if we're looking here, we'll see that uh, we're going through our fuel rods. And once the fuel rods are finished, they will turn into depleted fuel rods. And this can be processed in a centrifuge. You'll get uranium, plutonium, and uh, a little bit of 235. Now, the plutonium is usually what we're after when we have our starter reactor, as we want to make those better fuels, as well as using plutonium for other things in the mod, of course. And this is where the next topic comes in. There are many sizes of reactor, but of course we want to use the ones that work for us. So, to look at the large, heat, uh, large 
breeder reactor. This is what's known as a breeder reactor. You can see that there's no coolant in this thing. It's probably dangerous if you were to make this in real life, but I mean, it's Minecraft, so obviously you're not going to be doing real life nuclear physics in Minecraft and vice versa. But anyway, if I were to turn this on, these fuel rods are going to deplete at a very fast rate compared to what it would with coolant. And that's the goal here. We have, what is this? Uh, that's 12 times 4, that's 48 fuel rods going at once, and of course, when they deplete, they will turn into more of those depleted fuel rods, and this gets us more plutonium. This means we can make better fuels faster, and so this is just going to deplete these uh, fuels, and uh, I should mention the top, uh, the top of a reactor can be made of any combination of alloys, casings, item hatches, and fluid hatches. You technically don't even need either hatch, but obviously then you're not going to have a working reactor. But yeah, you can make designs that uh, work with this. And there's also a tool someone made for simulating reactors. I'll link that in the description. So uh, if you want to use that, go right ahead. So other than making plutonium and making power, the third thing we want to make, or well, I guess third and fourth, are deuterium and tritium. And as I stated, when water absorbs a fast neutron, it will produce deuterium. And, uh, oh, I actually never had the water input on this mate. I'll be right back. Okay, one water tower later, and uh, hooking up all of these pipes. Oh, also, I'd recommend that you hook up your fluid pipes and color-coded so that you know what's going through each. It just makes it that much easier to manage everything. So I have a different design here. Now, again, as I stated, you want to make sure that there is water going in all directions for these fuel rods. You want to make sure that every tile is being touched by neutrons so that, of course, the neutrons will be working. So if I were to turn this on, once again, it'll take a while to heat everything up. Now, this... uh. Oh yes, another thing you're going to want is a fluid trash can. So this is going to be the lowest pr uh, priority on the network for each of our inputs. And this is going to ensure that the system doesn't overflow with any particular thing. Because if it fills up on steam, it's going to slow down, right? So we want to make sure we're avoiding all of that excess steam. Obviously, you really want to be making power and such with it, but that's beside the point here. We want to make tons of deuterium so that we can turn that deuterium into tritium. You could make heavy water normally, but I would much rather make it with a reactor, and of course you can make power from this. And because we are making this heavy water, it's getting sent over to this other reactor. Now, of course, this is going to be slow, especially for how many of the... Uh, how many of the components are uh, using it, and even still, I didn't quite hit every one of the inputs with the uh, pipes, but that's okay. Once I uh, fix that real quick. Okay. So, yeah, we have a big reactor like this, and the point of this design is to make sure that all of the water inside get hit. You know, you want to maximize the water contact for the neutrons, because of course, if it doesn't touch any water, it's getting wasted, right? And uh, you'll notice that we're only generating heavy water at a fairly slow rate. Obviously, we have infinite water and can have a fairly high transfer rate on that. So because of this, I have a uh, special thing in this design, a heat exchanger. What this heat exchanger can do is it's turning the heavy water steam that's not being produced yet back into heavy water, and the actual power output is being made as regular steam. So if you want to be more efficient with your heavy water production, you're really interested in tritium, I would recommend using a heat exchanger or many heat exchangers, of course. I only have the one here. But if I have this turned on, like the other one, it's going to heat everything up and it turns things into steam and tritium. And so the tritium is being produced. I can just make a uh, tank here to store all of the uh, tritium, of course. But uh, I know this was a bit of an uh, everywhere kind of video, but 
what we're doing here is ensuring that we produce enough uh, heavy water to make tritium and recycle it to ensure that the production rate stays relatively um, viable, uh, relatively high rate of fluid production. I mean, of course, uh, because we are, oh, all the tritium uh, collected in here, because I did not properly set the output on this. Oops, my bad. I'll just fix that real quick. Then, uh, yeah, now you can see that we are making tritium and uh, we're making deuterium and you know that gets turned into heavy water uh, ultimately you want to make sure you have a relatively high transfer rate going on here you know so uh, I think now uh, once again I'm going to uh, summarize all of the tips because they were a bit spread out so as I said before and we're just gonna look in here right when building a reactor well, the first thing you might want is set up item pipes on all of your item inputs to make sure those are automated as well. You'll want to make sure you have automated production of robot arms, helium, and all them other components that are in need of being produ produced. And uh, by looking at the reactor here, you want to make sure that when you're designing it, that neutrons are touching all of these spaces that have water because you want to maximize that efficiency, of course. You might want to have the design be modified depending on how you're building it. But the point being here is that we are ensuring that all of these spaces are being touched and you can use the other components if you want to get more fancy. Again, we have the breeder reactor here as an example, and it's already going through those fuel rods fairly quickly. And of course you're gonna have production rate to keep up with it. And these are also being gone through and these are going to make sure that we are producing a fairly high rate of tritium and deuterium when it comes to building these reactors. Now, these are kind of heavy, uh, expensive, but in a future update of Neotech, I believe they're going to be a little bit cheaper. So look forward to that if you are looking to make your nuclear designs. But other than that, you know, use a heat exchanger if you want to conserve on your heavy water. You might also want to invest in a pressurizer if you want a higher reaction rate and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the nuclear tips and tricks of course if you have questions ask me in the comments and uh, yeah if you want to go back over how uh, each of those uh, neutron properties and uh, components work look at that part of the video and again I will link that lovely reactor planner in the description so please go there once again if you want to use it so thank you for watching, this has been Pick, I'm glad to have seen you, and I hope to see you again.